Colleagues, it gives, it gives me great pleasure to introduce an absolutely fantastic friend of mine, uh, a great MP. She'll be a fantastic minister in the next parliament, Laura Pitkin. coming out on this Saturday to this campaign launch. Thank you for every single thing that the people who have contributed uh, so far have said. I want to say thank you very much to Charlotte Warris, who is the campaign coordinator and has done a brilliant job in this campaign but to be honest we haven't really stopped since we were elected in 2017 uh, but to, to Holly Liam and Ian you, you are incredible people Ian sometimes calls me like after uh, difficult meetings or after I've had some hard moments in parliament and he says Laura yarit <laughs> I yarit Laura and when he says the yarit I know that maybe I've um, done something in a meeting to, to signal that I, I'm not I'm not not all right, but that really does make a difference. And he's also never afraid to say what he actually thinks in shadow cabinet either, which is um, which is also very interesting at times. Um, but brothers and sisters, we've arrived here at, at our opportunity, and it feels like it's been a long time coming doesn't it? We've arrived at our opportunity to remove this cruel and harsh government from power, an opportunity to forge new cultural norms about the way we treat each other and the way the state treats its citizens that it serves. We have the opportunity to challenge unfettered capitalism, which so brutalises the human spirit. And we have the opportunity to set this beautiful planet on a new direction towards survival. I know each person in this room and each person in this room has a story. I know you have a deep and personal connection as to why you have dedicated your entire life, your time today, the years that you have given to this fight. You have a story to tell. Your story may be personally, uh, personally intense because I know that the people in this room are not free from the harsh effects of this system. The poverty pay, the extortionate rents, the worry about being able to pay bills. This is not, however, and we must never, ever forget this. This is an, an individual experience of personal mismanagement of your lives. It is a collective experience and a failure of the system. So in your busy times and in your hard, uh, often hard lives, I want to know you to know how grateful I am for everything, every single thing you give to this cause. And why do we do it? That's a, a really important question to answer. Why are we sat here in hope and in optimism, utterly motivated and inspired to do every single thing that we can to change the system? Why do we knock on people's doors, for God's sake, on cold Saturday afternoons? Why do we challenge people when we hear the lies that are repeated about us, when that have seeped into people's consciousness to make them really angry about us, angry about our movement? Why do we challenge those people? Why do we keep trying? Why do we keep trying to change the system? It's because we feel it. We feel it. We know it. We know what's being done to our communities and our people. We feel it in the pits of our stomach. We feel every single bit of pain about what is done to this community in Northwest Durham. And of course, we have a broader political vision that we want to carry out, but we just want it to stop. We want it to stop. We want the harm and the path that we are currently on, we want it to stop. It must stop because this constituency is absolutely incredible. Our rich industrial heritage, the huge potential that we have to be at the heart of the green industrial revolution fills me with so much hope and excitement. We have some of the most talented people here, artists and craftspeople. We have right here, some of the finest produce in the world is produced right here. We have some of the most amazing eateries. Please feel free to go and find a lovely cafe after this meeting. We've got award-winning pubs. We've got 
got the most beautiful countryside. I don't care what any other candidate says anywhere else. <laughs> this place has the most beautiful countryside and areas of outstanding natural beauty. We have a rich agricultural network. The people here look after our countryside, they feed the nation and our ecosystem, they look after it. We have the remnant of productive industry here. We have brilliant schools, we have the best people and we deserve better. This area deserves better. Because for all of that beauty and all of that excellence behind the doors of people that live here is another story, isn't there? And you will have heard it knocking on doors. As I said at the start, you might have felt a lot of it. And that story has to be told. Like a family I met the other week who live in a damp property and they have a child. They both work, but they're on low pay and zero hour contract. Their life is centered around surviving, keeping their head above water. They are so resilient and so brave. Or the older woman that I met who showed me her rota. She's on rota from seven in the morning till 11 at night, caring for people in the community who cannot take up any other form of employment during that time, is not being paid between those visits, is not paid mileage. She should have had her pension by now, by the way, and her bus pass, uh, and, and, and that has been denied to her, but she's actually being paid below even the minimum hourly rate of pay. All the young people in this community who have not got a sixth form anymore, they have to travel six, seven, eight, some 10 hours extra a week just to get a sixth form education, their courses have been slashed. Or the health service that has been cut here in this area and the battle that I know loads of people in this room have had to fight day in, day out for years, for absolutely years to keep what is rightfully ours and what we deserve. The low pay that is now an epidemic, the scourge of insecurity and it is a constant theme here. The worry about what will happen to our local school, the worry about the job, the worry about the planet, the survival of the planet, and the deep, deep worry that there will be more war and conflict in the world. This, this has to stop, and it's, it's within our power to make it happen. This is our opportunity, because every single problem that I've just set out there has a solution. The Labour Party has a solution to it. My department, as Ian has said, will eliminate zero-hour contracts. We will reduce we will lift the minimum rate of pay to £10 per hour. Workers will have their rights from day one of employment. Women will have a year's worth of maternity pay should they wish to take that. There will be a workers' protection agency to enforce rights and pay at work. Education will be fu fully funded. There will be an end to academisation. University... <laughs> education will be free, prescriptions will be free, our buses will be regulated, meaning they'll be cheaper, there'll be more routes, our rail, mail and water and the national grid will be brought back into public. <laughs> The pay cap will be lifted. We'll take on the big pharmaceutical companies who rip off our NHS. We will make sure that the planet has a future, for goodness sake, through our Green New Deal. The biggest job creating, planet saving, economy stimulating agenda that this country has seen since 1945. And this is before the manifesto has been released. <laughs> The choice couldn't be more stark, could it? There are literally two paths ahead of us. There is so much at stake and it is, the power is literally in our hands to determine the outcome. And I know that this feels like a pressure, actually, as well as a privilege. But I know you in this room and I know what you are capable of. And I know this movement and what it is capable of. And I have absolute faith that this is our time. I know it has been a long time coming, but we are on the path 
to justice. And because people know that it is perfectly possible that Jeremy Corbyn could be our Prime Minister, you can be sure that absolutely everything, absolutely everything is going to be thrown at us in the next few weeks. People will say some of the most hurtful things about our people and our communities and our political representatives. Please forgive them. Please forgive them, for they know not what they do. <laughs> know they don't feel what we feel so ignore the polls ignore the negativity ignore the lies and the hate it is a pointless waste of your precious energy we will win this election and it will be our positivity our confidence our hope and our vision it will be us standing tall and firm through the battering rain and through the howling gains as a beacon of light leading the way for what is possible for what can be done for how different things can be that will be the thing that wins us this election we are not in this room a group of individuals, but a collective. We are one and we will go forward as one to victory. Thank you very much. <laughs>